Hola y aloha, and welcome back to our show. We're the voice for the Hispanic Chamber of Commerce, where we aim to create an inclusive platform that celebrates diversity, fosters connections, and amplifies the voice of our Latino business owners. Today, we're going to be talking about who is the Hispanic Chamber and what are we up to. So thank you for joining us. And my co-host today is Marisol Ruiz, our Vice President. Welcome, Marisol. Thank you so much, Barbara. Uh, I am Marisol Ruiz. I am the vice president, uh, along with uh, Barbara and co-founder. I'm really excited to be here today with you guys and share a little bit about the chamber and some pretty exciting things that Barbara and I have coming up. So let's get to it. Let's get to it. So how did we start the chamber? We organized in 2019. So let's talk about that. Um, yeah, so Barbara and I, right, she, she's a, a realtor, I'm a mortgage broker, and naturally it's a, it's a match made in heaven <laughs> already. <Made> in heaven. <laughs> <laughs> so we are really trying to, how can we expand our business? How can we grow? How can we network with other um, Latinos in the industry, both the real estate sector and the lending side? And um, we just wanted to to network, really. So we went out and and we were trying to find a chamber, and we we're like, yeah, we'll join and 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 network that way. <laughs> and then yeah. what happened, Barbara? When we went knocking on the doors looking for that chamber, we were like, well, there was over three hundred Hispanic Chamber of Commerce across the United States. There has to be one in Hawaii. So when we Googled it, we realized that there was a Latino business Hawaii ten years prior. So we called the Chamber of Commerce and we asked, how do we get it started again? And they connected us with Mari Villa, who ran the LBH um, 10 years prior and her husband, Jose Villa. And they have a wonderful business called Villa Business Consulting. And um, they were, you know, happy to help out and get us organized as a 501c3 and, um, you know, started our, our board of directors and yeah. Their, their business really took off during the pandemic. So they are an advisory role now. And Mariso and I are, um, you know, trailblazing the way. <laughs> yes, we are. And it's a, yes. quite a bit of work, but, you know, we're constantly learning, right? And yes. growing and connecting. And I think above all things is really we're connectors and yes. we really like to uh, expand and grow and and amplify people's businesses however we can but that's what we're here to do just to connect and and help one another and one another grow <laughs> right and that yeah. we do that through various initiatives that we've had throughout the year like our buenos dias breakfast networking events we were doing those every other month this year at the um, taqueria ranchero in Capole. and next year uh, one of our initiatives will be to have uh, a, a Buenas Noches, right? A, a nighttime event. We had one last night. Let's talk about our mixer last night. It was really not a mixer. It was a members meeting and it went well. We had about 30 people. Yeah, it was really fun. We're at the Lokahi Brewing Company, which I recently discovered. I didn't even know they were here. They've been open. How long? Is it a year or two? A year? I thought a couple years. years. A wow. Two years, I think. And had no clue. And they're Latino owned. It was fabulous. And it was like a speed dating slash networking, not dating, networking. <laughs> <Business dating>, networking. <laughs> and it was awesome. Everyone was dynamic and energetic and, you know, people stepped out of their comfort zone as, you know, some people didn't really want to initially speak, but it was such a safe, awesome space that um, it fostered that for, for everyone and it allowed people to, uh, to open up a little bit. And um, yeah, I met some amazing connections and, um, you know, it reminds me that there's, for us, especially having these events, right, that mm -hmm. we want to host them uh, with Latino businesses because we're we're supporting them and promoting them, right? Correct. We're, um, damn. <laughs> well, it was so great to find him on Yelp. I just looked up Latinx businesses on Yelp and 160 or some came up. So just started calling um, the reason why I, I got on Yelp is because we were looking to reach out to Latino business owners in the community to participate in our upcoming Latino Business Expo, which we can talk about. Um, that's going to be October 7th at Aloha Tower Marketplace from 3 o'clock to 7 o'clock p.m. You can go to our website and get more information. Tickets are free if you want to attend. 
And if you if you want to sign up for a booth, we still have about five more spots left. It's going to be a great event. We have a capacity for about 30 um, vendors. And if you're going to be selling merchandise, it's 250. And if you're not going to sell, it's 150. So it's really reasonable. We're a nonprofit. We're not here to make money off this event. We're here to promote your business. The fee is just to pay for the venue. And we're also going to celebrate Hispanic Heritage Month with a um, some entertainment. You want to talk about that? Yes, we're so excited for this event. It's the first time that we're doing it. And um, we have, as Barbara said, about uh, 30 booths of food and services. But with that, we have entertainment. So we're super excited. Um, one portion of the evening is going to be um, carved out for Baile Folklorico, very traditional. It's a 30 dancers are going to come on stage and really perform traditional Mexican baile folklorico. They're coming all the way from Phoenix, Arizona. Yes. So we're really excited to have them. We're going to have a DJ. We have the Mambo Vixens that are going to do some dancing. We also have uh, some dance lessons from the professional dancers at uh, RIP Fitness. And what else do we have as far as aside from our DJ and dancing and uh, traditional uh, Mexican mm -hmm. baile folklorico. Well, we have an exciting cakey zone coming together. <gasps> That's right. Yes. yes. Speaking of Mambo what? Vixens, they do a salsa class for children. So I reached out to them and I asked if they would be interested in, you know, doing a little salsa class in our cakey zone. And they were happy to oblige. So they recommended doing two different, you know, classes. So it's a four hour event. So maybe a in between, you know, two hour increments, um, get enough kids together and do a, a salsa class and have them do a little performance and what they learned. And, um, you know, this weekend I went to uh, Duke's car show. They just had their fifth anniversary, right? So that was at the West Oahu Veterans Center. And I got to speak with um, the the leader there in Aulupe. So they had- Hold a on, Barbara. Wait, wait, wait. You got to explain. What do you mean a car show? Like, okay, it's a what is rider. Duke's car? Low yeah, rider. like you have to be pretty clear. Oh, yeah, what is that? Okay, low riders. And um, so they had a, about a 10 by 10 table with model cars and the kids were having a hopping contest using a remote control. So I asked them if they could have that in our kids zone. So all we have to do is produce a 10 by 10 flat surface. So we're working on that. I think we, if we could put that together, that's going to be amazing. And speaking of Duke's low rider car show, they are going to be at our expo, so they'll have their beautiful cars outside of the Aloha Towers parked right there by the Spaghetti Factory. Yep. Yeah, that's really exciting. I haven't seen a lowrider uh, since uh, a real lowrider with the hydraulics and jumping since I left Los Angeles. <laughs> so I'm <Yeah>. really excited. <laughs> or oh, yeah. the or the car shows, uh, Hot August Nights in Reno. Those are amazing too. But uh, this uh, hits home, so I'm really excited to see that um, that side of uh, the our culture as well, and it's going to be so fun for the kids. Um, we're hoping we can get yeah a few more people to fill up those those booths. But along with you know, it's not just food, like she said, it's the lowriders entertainment. We also have a VIP area, which is mm -hmm. very exciting. Barbara, do you want to talk a little bit about that fabulous VIP and uh, oh, my what we have in there? That's its own event, so. <laughs> um, we just got confirmation yesterday that Terramana Tequila will be sponsoring our VIP networking. So we're going to have a VIP on the lawn networking with some of our business panelists, which we'll talk about next. And uh, we have Oysters Hawaii that's going to share their wonderful oyster shucking um, business and, and some oysters there with a tequila testing, tequila tasting. And it's $75 a ticket. And what are we doing with the $75, Marisol? We are donating uh, the proceeds from the VIP to Maui and everything that's gone on there with the fire. So um, we're trying to, to, to do our part however we can. So we're really excited about that, actually. Correct. Yes, we do have a Hawaii business fund that we have. It's, it's active right now on GoFundMe. So we're going to add any you know, profit a, por a portion of the proceeds <laughs> to our Hawaii Business Fund fundraiser that we have. So um, yes, we're all doing our part to help Maui and it's gonna be a great networking event. 
um, with a tequila tasting and uh, some poo-poos. Yeah. And let's talk about the panelists. Our special guests include the owners of Rip Fitness, Val and Hip Rivera. Do you want to talk about the our special guest panelists? Uh, yeah, we can. Uh, we'll talk about that. So uh, Val and Hip are the owners of Rip Fitness. It's an amazing Latino-owned gym out in Waipahu. It is a vibe. Um, it is non-threatening. It's fun. Everyone looks amazing. <laughs> they work so hard but they make you feel so good, right? So he's going to come out and he's going to, you know, he's one of the panelists going to talk about, well, whatever questions we kind of throw at them, but really, you know, who are you? How'd you get here? How'd you do it? You know, how'd you blow up so well? (laughs) So we're excited. We have, yeah, Hip and Val. We have the owner of, you know, Taqueria El Ranchero. Um, He's a veteran. Uh, He literally like Googled how to start a business. I mean, and it's amazing how he's expanded and growing and the avenues that um, that he's taken since uh, his first uh, location opened. So he's going to be on there as well, sharing knowledge. The what? What's his name? Uh, did I, I? I didn't say. Sorry, Hector. Okay. <laughs> Hector yeah, Garcia Hector Gomez. Gomez. <laughs> okay. And uh, go ahead. Do you want to finish the rest? Sure. You're on a roll. Let's go. <laughs> so um, our... Uh, Two more of our guests include the owners of Mercado de la Raza. They were at our mixer last night, Alex and Megan. They will be there. And um, they were there with their cute baby, Sebastian. Oh, my gosh. And they're great. I mean, they have, they're the only, um, I don't want to say like a grocery store, but kind of. It's just that where you find Latin American products, not just Mexican or Salvadorian. You have Brazilian, Peruvian, Colombian. I mean, you have everything and from spices and sauces and and one of the wonderful things that they do is right um once a month they have they call it uh marchantes uh and they bring out they basically create a space it's marchantes hawaii where they provide a space for whether you make i don't know maybe you make pupusas or cookies or you know, yeah. you have some kind of, you know, chocolate, whatever it might be. Uh, it has to be food related, though, um, is I think one of their prerequisites. Mm-hmm. And they provide a space and you promote, they promote your product and, you know, gives people an opportunity to try it, taste it, and you're promoting as well. So um, it's awesome that they're doing that. Um, and they're over on Baratania. So they're going to be sharing their experience as well. And who's our, our, our final uh speaker panelist barbara uh, his name's dominic and he owns hnlax I, there's two locations pro ridge and waikele so it's a successful barber and salon so he's gonna be talking about marketing and how he grew his business and the thing is he doesn't even cut hair <laughs> he That's owns awesome. it and runs it so um it, it's great I, and this is this is what's making these business owners and setting them apart is that they're involved in our community, especially, I mean, not especially, all of them are. Um, we just had uh, Hip Rivera on and he was talking about uh, the the gym, Rip Fitness. And what they do differently is they, they offer salsa and bachata classes, but they also do these sipping shops once a month where they invite members of our community, business owners, and, and to come into the gym and showcase their product and you know they also have their dance team they're dancing like marisol said it's a vibe there's food trucks there tents with food um music a fashion show they have a clothing line so we're just gonna you know have a a great panel discussion led by maria arieta she's uh got the questions prepared and it's it's gonna be a great um showcase and one of the things I wanted to point out, you know, w- w- what is unique about this and why we felt it was important to have panelists, um, I think, especially within our community, in the Latino community. Um, yes, we have great food and dance and music and energy and all of the things, right? But to be able to showcase these panelists and talk about their experience be- allows other people to expand their mind, right? So mm-hmm. just like with Dominic. He doesn't cut hair, yet he owns a barber shop, right? More than one, right? So it's it, it breaks those barriers. There's no limitations. You don't have to be an expert in the food industry or, you know, cosmetology or 
whatever it might be to run a business in that field. And I think that's really important for people to know because it kind of blows the lid off of things and like, hey, wait a second, there's these other opportunities as well. I don't have to be a master at that certain craft to actually still engage in that business, right? So that's going to be really exciting to talk about that. And, and I think it'll help a lot of people that might kind of want to dabble or have ideas of doing things and might not know how. Um, right. And I think this will be, you know, encouraging and 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 give people a support and a platform for that. Definitely inspirational. And uh, you made a good point. Even Hector Garcia Gomez, the owner of the Taqueria, he Googled how to start a restaurant. He's not a chef or a, a cook. He, I'm sure he has his family's recipes, but he's successful. And, and he's also doing things outside of the box. He has bailes and dances there and um, comedy, comedy shows. shows and um what karaoke, you know, so anything to bring business into your restaurant. So they're they're doing things outside of the box. And that's why we want to have that discussion with them to, to just learn from them and see how they're growing. So it's going to be a, a great business expo of our, of our community. And it's for Latinos and those who love us. So, you know, don't feel like it's exclusive. We want to be inclusive. So we just want to share our culture since it's Hispanic Heritage Month. And speaking of that, Marisol and I are going to be traveling next week to Florida because uh, the United States Hispanic Chamber of Commerce, the big daddy, <laughs> the, is having um, the conference. It's in Orlando, the 23rd to the 26th. So we'll be there learning about the Hispanic economy and bringing back some great information to share with you on our Hola y Aloha talk show. And um, after that, we'll be traveling to Miami. And in Miami is going to be, this is a, okay, I'm going to give you the acronym. It's N-A-H-R-E-P, NAREP. It stands for, there you go, National Association of Hispanic Real Estate Professionals. And that logo right there is the top 100. Your girl, Barbara DeLuca right here made the top 100 realtors um, for the <laughs> Southwest region. So that would include um, Southern California, Arizona, and Hawaii. So I'm so happy to attend this one because they have a special, you know, meetings um, for some of the, the members that made this, this honorary list. So I'm excited to, to make that. And uh, in conjunction with NARAP is also Latitude. So Latitude is a whole nother, I mean, it's, it's two conferences really going on at once in Miami. And Latitude is going to have, a, it's talking more about the mainstream economy and how the Latinos contribute to the mainstream economy involving fashion, um, sports. Uh, Oscar De La Hoya is gonna be one of the speakers um, talking about um, Golden Boy, his, his company, and um, John Leguizamo is another guest, and Fat Joe, and um, who else is gonna be present? We It's just gonna be a great conversation. Yeah, it, it is. And then one, and then within, I mean, within those days, there's so many, awesome breakout rooms right and little conferences with <laughs> within the conferences so so we have to sit and really kind of decide what we want to to talk about right or not talk about but attend because there's just so much fabulous information that we can bring back right especially about uh with latino uh, uh statistics mm -hmm. um so we're pretty excited about that as well i'm excited to learn about the hispanic homeownership and, and, you know, how, how we are contributing to the homeownership in America, because as a realtor and a lender, this is important information and we can come back and share it with our, our community. And uh, I'm looking forward to uh, the Esteban, Esteban, Emilio Esteban and Gloria Esteban. <laughs> they are hosting it because this is their city, Miami, right? Right. So and Sheila E is going to be performing. It's just going to be fabulous. Like, like Marisol said, we got to pick and choose which ones we want to attend. And like, she might be interested in a different workshop. And then I might be, you know, I'm, I'm interested in learning about the, the gross domestic product, the GDP and how we contribute to that. I'm just, you know, it's going to be a great, great. Conference. Yeah. There's one. Did you, did you see it's the uh, preview of state of Hispanic wealth report? And I didn't know this, that it's like a 10 year anniversary of a Hispanic wealth project like blueprint. And they're mm -hmm. basically, it's like a comprehensive look at financial well-being of Hispanic households in the US. I and mean, this is a 10-year anniversary. So their goal is tripling Hispanic wealth by uh 2000 at that point was it 2014 was the goal was 
tripling uh, Hispanic wealth. So we're coming up on that time, that anniversary is coming up. So I'd love to see what those um, metrics are and, and, and get the report on that. So we'll be sharing some information with everybody. Sure. Yeah, there's so many. It's 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 pretty overwhelming. <laughs> and you want to participate in all of them, but you just you just well, can't. <laughs> I know, I know, right? We're gonna have to break out and you go there and I'll go here. I want to learn about the Smithsonian National Museum of the American Latino. That's a new Smithsonian. And the the founder is going to be there talking about that. So that's really exciting. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah. And, so, and not to mention the galas. <laughs> yeah, those are always yeah. fun. <laughs> And not gonna lie those are fun right and we're, i mean we're in orlando and miami there's plenty of stuff to do but i don't even know if we're gonna have time to explore outside of no all of this exciting you know stuff right <laughs> i don't yeah. i don't i don't think so i don't, I don't think, think we're, so. Have... we're gonna be so tired when we come back i know um, don't you remember last year when when uh, we attended i was like yeah i mean i was exhausted <laughs> i was fried <laughs> yeah. Yeah. and like, that was only one event we're doing two <laughs> yes yes so um, Phoenix was great. We went to Phoenix last year so uh, for the United States Hispanic Chamber Conference. And our goal is to bring the conference here to Hawaii. And our what we need to do is make more connections with uh, corporate sponsors. And we're going to get there. You know, we're, we're, we just organized this in 2019. And we have lots of interest from the board of directors of the United States Hispanic Chamber to bring it out here. They're just so happy to hear that we have Latinos in Hawaii and that we're 12% of the population and growing. Um, and even, even in Lahaina, you know, there, I know I'm switching gears here, but we, we learned from uh, Ruben Juarez, our treasurer. He's also serves on the board of Hero. So Civil Beat reached out to us and he was able to share that the Lahaina population is, is uh, 13%. So due to the service industry, we do have a lot of Latinos that work worked in Lahaina and 22% um, of the students in Lahaina are Latino. So, you know, that's almost one in four kids are, are Latino that lived in Lahaina, lived and worked there. So um, yes, it's just learning, you know, all those numbers and and, and sharing it with, with our community and, and for Latinos and those who love us, whoever wants to learn about us, we're here, we're here for you. Um, okay, so, what else do we have going on? Um, at the end of the year, Marisol, we're gonna meet, right, with our board and we're gonna set out some initiatives for next year. So Hola y Aloha Talk Show was one of our initiatives. So um, we're so happy that Think Tech Hawaii has provided this platform for us. And we wanna thank our listeners for joining us today and you know, learning more about the Hispanic Chamber and, and our, our upcoming events. Please visit us October 7th at our Latino Business Expo. And thank you, Marisol, for joining me today. Thank you, Barbara. Yes, please, everybody, come one, come all, tell your friends, uh, make it a day. It's a family day, uh, music, dancing, food, uh, cakey zone um, with all the of the, the what? <laughs> Tequila tasting. And we're going to have Tequila a bar. Tasting. There's also yeah. a bar if you want to purchase. And if you look at the screen right there, you'll see a lot of the vendors that are participating. Yeah, that would be really great to to hold that up there for a little minute. <laughs> oh, I see. Yeah. Soldier. soldier. <laughs> I'll have Thank a booth you, there. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Me and Marisol will have a booth there too. Thank you for joining us. And we'll see you October 7th. And we look forward to our next guest on Ole Aloha. And it's going to be Tito Puente Jr., you guys. He's going to be here for the Hispanic Heritage Festival, October 14th and 15th. So he's our guest in two weeks. Okay, so we'll see you then. Aloha y adios. Aloha.